Hey Craftaholic besties! Today we're going to be making some ornaments. I'm super excited to dive into this project and I'm actually going to be using the November Crafting and Christ Club Kit. So that will be linked below and um, let's go through what's in this kit. So first of all, I could not be more excited about these. So these are from Lemon Drops and Lilies and this is the free gift with the Crafting and Christ um, Kit Club as well as the Napkin Club for this month in November. If you're watching this after November, I am working with different businesses to get free gifts every month, so it's just a little extra treat. But I'm gonna open this little sucker up. We will not be using it on this project, but I did wanna share just how beautifully stunning these are. So this one is the Lamb of God, and you could use this as an ornament, you can use this on, on a plate, if you do a nice tablescape for Thanksgiving or a special meal, so many things you can do with these. I'm actually probably gonna put this on a cutting board in another video. But I just wanted to show you and thank Lemon Drops and Lilies. She is a master at making decorating easy for busy moms and just making everything beautiful. So that's in this month's kit. Also in this month's kit is uh, these little cutout designs. Evidently, we're all about wood cutout cutouts here in November of 2022. But I won't be using this today either, but this is in there. And the words on these vary. They're Noel, Faith, Love, Hope. Um, so whichever one you get is a surprise. Then we have the wood slice ornaments. This is what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using one of these. You get two in the kit this month. I'm just going to put aside the stuff I'm not using. Um, obviously you get your Mod Podge, you get your paintbrush. I'll put those aside because I'll be using mine here. And then we have the napkin club for this month. So napkin clubs, 10 napkins, five designs, two of each. So this kit has 10 napkins in it. So I'll go through the designs just really quickly. This is our first gold embossed napkin, Behold. The Lamb of God, you'll see we have a little theme going on this month. Super excited to use this. Again, I might use this on a cutting board. So two of those, two of Luke 2.14, Glory to God, Peace on Earth, super cute. Then for the hymn this month, we have Hark the Herald Angels Sing. What I love about this one is it's really warm, and then it also has like the little angel caroler singing in the middle, just super sweet. That one would fit um, nice if you wanted to focus on the angels. On this one, um, I'm gonna be using a different one, but that one would fit. And then we also have Proverbs 17, 22. A joyful heart is good medicine with a little ornament there. Again, kind of sticking with the ornament themes. And then the final one is Isaiah 9, 6, Prince of Peace. This is the one I will be using today. And then in this kit as well, you have extra sheets of paper, craft paper to use on your ornaments or for another project. So this one, it looks like I've got some poinsettias and I've got a way to major little uh, music sheet. So these will always vary. However, you should get a music little music sheet in each one, but they're all different hymns on that one. So without further ado, we're gonna put this stuff to the side and get started here. So also, let me, I haven't finished that packing yet. You're gonna have a little bag that has all this fun little stuff in it. So we've got the ribbon, I'll be using that. This is the ribbon for the other ornament. Um, I won't be using that today. I will be using the ribbon or the jute to hang it. And then we'll be using these um, four beads as well as the bell. And then each kit comes with a sticker. So we'll just put that aside. And then we also should get, which I had it in there, but I might have flung it. It's really tiny. My little beater that I make, and it is made out of fishing twine. And so it's dang near invisible. And I loaded it in there before. All right, I'm not sure where it went, so I'm gonna grab another one real quick. This is my secret tool for getting anything through beads or small bowls. So this will be included in your kit as well. It'll be in the plastic, um, the little plastic bag, but I will need that because otherwise getting this through this is gonna be interesting. All right, some other things that you're going to want to have. You're gonna want scissors, 
sanding block is how I'm going to finish the edges. Your, I already have the Mod Podge in the kit. Um, glue gun is what I'll be using, and I think that's it. All right, so we're going to get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just cut out this part because I'm only going to want to, I'm only working with the one part of the design, so I like to get the rest out of the way. If this is the first time that you're watching one of my videos, you may be wondering why the print is only on one side of the napkin. And that is because we choose to use U.S. printers um, here to support the U.S. economy. And we also do all of our own designs. So to keep costs affordable, we're only able to print on the front side of the napkin because we're doing custom printing. If I would take this overseas, I would have much larger minimums and obviously would not be supporting the U.S. economy. And so we just choose to keep it in-house here in the U.S., which means we can only print on the front side of the napkin. So that is why we only have the front side. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I am lining up my design to get all of the words on here. Because I just wanna make sure that it is gonna fit. Now you could use a bunch of this uh, border. I'm actually not gonna use any of it for this project, so I'm gonna cut it so I can save it for another project. Um, because I think those little strips could be fun on something else. So one thing I love about decoupage is we use everything. So I might not be using it for this project, but I'm gonna save it and use it for another. It's fun to layer different designs. And so I'm gonna keep that. Now these uh, little wood slice, they are like actual wood slices. So they are what I call little crummy. So you wanna make sure that you keep, uh, try to keep it clean, not move it around too much or you might get crumbs under your design, which we don't want. So it might even be a smart idea to have like a lint roller to go over it right before you put the napkin on it so that you don't have little bark pieces under your design. But the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm just ripping a corner so it's easier for me to get the top ply of the design because these are three ply napkins, but we're only gonna be using the very um, top, very top one. And it's always a little bit tricky to get it. So I did get a ply off, but I did not get the right one. So this is still two ply. So I'm going to have to try again. And I'm just doing it on one of the bottom corners because I'm not gonna be, I only really need the center of the design. I swear, this is always like the hardest part. I'm just keep messing with it here. I see people do it with water and it's like so easy. All right, we're gonna try a different corner because that one's not, I'm not able to get it. I swear, this is always the hardest part. All right, I see it separated. Oh my gosh, my fan is not helping here. All right, there we go, finally got it. All right. I love that they're three ply because we get the great quality, but then I sometimes hate that it's three ply because sometimes it gives me issues. Okay, so if you didn't like this transparent look where you can see the wood behind, you could actually paint the wood behind it white. I'm just gonna go with it because I wanna see how it looks not painted white. And then since I have two, I might paint the second one white. All right, I'm just gonna lay my brush on there so my fan doesn't blow it away. And I'm gonna get my Mod Podge ready here. Again, you're really gonna to wanna to watch this bark so that you don't get Mod Podge in or don't get bark in your Mod Podge, which I include the little Mod Podges in the kit. So you might wanna use, even if you have Mod Podge, you might want to just use the one I provided um, to keep your container clean. All right, so I'm just starting from one side and I am going all the way out 
to the edges because I'm going to take the sanding block to it and so I can sand off any part that I don't want. If I want more of the bark to show, I will worry about that um, when I'm more finishing. And I am getting a little bit of wood in here, so just lightly pressing, working it all the way around. And then just making sure I get all of it. Again, lightly pressing. It does look like I have a little bubble in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of plastic. Um, you can even lose your bag from the, the uh, names of God. But I just have a little piece of plastic here. You can use a Ziploc bag. You could use um, Saran Wrap. And I'm just pressing that down and I'm gonna peel it back. Okay, so we have it just like that, and it does look like I'm missing a little Mod Podge in the middle. So I am just gonna do a light coat. And press it down. Slide it off, all right. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do while it is still wet is poke your hole. They do have the drilled hole in it for the ornament. And so you wanna go from the front and poke it in. So if you go from the back and poke it out, then all your napkin's gonna be coming out at you. So poke it from the front. And I'm just gonna let that, actually, I was gonna let that dry, but I need to put the string through it. So, I'm gonna close up my Mod Podge, and I am going to proceed with gently doing my sanding. So, to sand it, I'm going down and then away. I'm not going back and forth because I don't want to lift the napkin. And then I'm just gonna keep working it until I get to that bark edge because I do want on mine the live edge to show. You may or may not want. I mean, it's just a design choice. But that's one of the things that I loved about, I just love these live wood edged pieces of wood, these little rounds. I have a bunch in my kitchen um, that I, well, I have a bunch, I have two. <laughs> that I put um, with my cutting board displays. So you will wanna make sure wherever you're sticking your thumb when you're doing this is dry. I kind of skip, normally I would probably wait and come back like in you know 20 minutes or so, but for the tutorial, I kind of just have to keep going. So I'm just gonna murky my way around it. Just gently kind of sanding it off. And of course I am losing some of the bark, so that is, if you're as aggressive as me, that might happen. And there is other ways to do it too. But I really just like, all right, I really just like the, the sanded look. So before I go any further, I am gonna clean up my little bark here. Or at least move it a little bit out of the way because I don't want bark on everything. So this is a little bit of a messier project with the live edge, um, but I think it's gonna be adorable when we're done. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna string my loop through here. And then I think I'm gonna do the bell next. So I'm gonna put both sides through. Now the bell is probably a little bit easier to string, so you probably don't need um, the beater tool for that. We'll see, yeah, okay, that was it. And I do want my bell on the front. And I'm gonna string the beads, and then I'm gonna do a bow. So if I had, um, which let me, I may grab, I'm gonna grab some red paint. Good heavens, I don't even know. This is just my son's crafting areas right here, so I'm gonna grab this, I'm assuming it's acrylic. 
but we're gonna run with it because I don't think I have a red up here. Oh, I do have a red chalk paint. Okay, just kidding, we're saved. Saved by the red chalk paint. All right, I'm gonna use red chalk paint. And I probably could have done this while I was doing my other, but oh well. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna paint my beads red. So I'm just going to do a thin layer so that we can dry fairly quickly on us and we can keep moving. Now obviously you could do any color, hopefully we got all of it there, but I'm just trying to bring out the red in the Prince of Peace. And then the bow that I'm going to be making, I'm going to use the buffalo check that came with the kit. And so that's going to kind of bring in some, some white and black. All right. I'm going to, you may, if you're doing the red, there's probably an easier way to do this. But I just kind of go in and get messy. That's the way that I craft. So I may look a little crime scene-y, may have some crime scene fingers here for a minute, but I think it's worth it because I really want to pull the red, especially since I did not paint the background, I really want to pull that red out. Now you know what? I think I am going to leave one natural. I'm going to do three. And I tainted this one, so I'm gonna put it aside. But um, I'm gonna leave one of the beads natural. So I'm gonna do red, natural, red. Maybe I'll do red, natural, red, natural. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the red out of the way. You know, I come up with these ideas of what I wanna do with my kit, my tutorial, and then I get here and I change it and it's hard because, you know, I just have to film the video and I never know what it's gonna turn out with or what am I what I'm doing until I get to the point where I'm like, oh I think I'll do this. So hopefully it's not too confusing to you watching this. Let's see how lucky we are. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna just wipe off that one part. And again, this is just for the tutorial. I do have to kind of speed it along, so I'll touch up these other parts when I'm done. But I'm gonna show you how to use the speeder. So this is what I came up with myself when I had to create um, some ornaments last year and I had to string this really fat ribbon through this really little hole. And I was like, I need some kind of loop device. So I just made it myself. But um, again, it's just fishing string with a knot tied at the bottom. Nothing I can go patent or anything. But I just take the loop and I'm gonna put it around so that my, my it's around the string. And then you just take like the little pointy ends and you stick it through the bead. And then when you grab them, you might have to use a little bit of wiggle force, but you just pull it right through. And so the inside of this was a little wet. So it is, uh, it painted my string a little bit, but I think it will work because I'm gonna use multiple beads. All right, so then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put the string, I almost did it backwards. Put my loop around the string, put my beater through, grab the tails, pull it through. You're probably gonna love me after this because it literally is like the best life-saving thing if you have to bead anything. Because it gets so stressful trying to stick the like fat things through little holes when you're crafting. All right, so here's my my red natural, red natural. Um, let me see how thick this bow is gonna be. You know what, I think I'm gonna do one more because my bow is a little bit fat. So let me go grab one that I didn't ruin. I'm gonna grab one extra because I touched this one with my red hands and messed it up. Alright, so 
You might want to check the ends of your beads too because like this one has like a funky end and then it has a really nice clean end and I want the clean end to be, because this is my last bead, the rest of them it doesn't matter, but since this is my last bead, I want the end to be the cleanest. Okay, so I'm not tying it yet because I want to add a bow and I might need to push these beads up. So you'll want to make sure that your stuff is dry before you start putting your ribbon in here, otherwise you're gonna get red paint on your ribbon. All right, so I'm just tying it right in between that, the bell and the last bow. The bell and the last bead, sorry about that. And I'm gonna take my bow. And then you know how it is with bows. I gotta fiddle with it a bunch to get it how big I want it and things going in the right direction. So just kind of play with it. You could do any type of bow on this. Obviously you could do a whole bunch of other different ribbons, a big foofy bow, a pom-pom bow, like the sky's the limit here. I just saw something similar on Pinterest and I was like, oh, I love that. I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna get my bow. Here I have the glue gun and I didn't even need it. I thought initially I was gonna glue the bow, but nope, we're just gonna be able to string everything here. Okay, I like this size. I think this is good. I'm gonna clean up my tails on the bow. So I've got some nice tails there. Looking pretty cute. Okay, so I've got it pretty much where I want it, so I am gonna tie a knot here to keep my beads down where I want them so they don't go creeping up on me. And then you're just gonna tie your little knot at the top so that you can hang it on your tree or doorknob or wherever. And there you go, there's our little Prince of Peace ornament. So I would love to see how you do your ornaments. Obviously there's a million ways that you can do these. Um, so please make sure to share, you can, um, if you're not already in our Facebook group at the Christian Craftaholics on Facebook, uh, Christian Craftaholic Community, you can share your project in there. We'd love to have you any share any projects that you're, faith-based projects or any projects that you're working on. It's a group of Christian crafters. Um, who just love crafting and connecting with other Christian crafters. So we'd love to see you in there. I'll put a link to that in this um, below as well. And, or you can always email them to me at support at christiancraftpaper.com. And so that is it. Until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>